Welcome to ATC. Today we are going to discuss a case about a 50 year old man who came to our ER with complaints of right side low into groin pain associated with fever for the past 3 days. How are you sir? From an initial assessment, the patient was conscious, oriented and able to complete one full sentence. Coming to airway, error was patent, uh, no pooling of secretions noted. In breathing, air entry was bilaterally equal, normal vesicular breath sounds heard, respiratory rate of 18 per minute and saturation of 96% maintained room air. Circulation BP of 100 over 60 mm HG with a pulse rate of 100 per minute. All peripheral pulses were palpable. In, uh, patient uh, also had uh, fever, so we gave a paracetamol at that time also. And um, uh, in disability, GCS was full with the pupil bilaterally equally reacting. Okay. Uh, uh, Especially his temperature was. Okay. Yes. He was febrile and you were given him paracetamol. Okay. Sir, in agents, we, we took a VBG. VBG was showing a pH of 7.35 with PCO to 47 and bicarb of 23. Mm -hmm. And uh, the main uh, thing in the VBG was creatinine was 4.17. Okay. Can you just uh, tell uh, what was the patient complaint? He came with abdominal pain. Um, Law into groin abdominal, abdominal pain. pain. Since when? Past three days. Past three days and with fever. Fever. Fever with chills and rigor. Chills and rigor. Since yeah. last three, three days. days. Right side or left side? Right side. Right side. Age of the patient? 50. 50 year old male who has come with acute abdominal pain since last three days with loin to goin radiation yeah. and with breath, uh, with fever. Mm -hmm. So that is the history. So it's a classically we are pointing it towards a probably a ureter calculi. On top of that he would have developed a uh, possible infection also. Infection. Yeah. So that is what we have got from assessment yeah. and uh, airway breathing circulation is fine only he was febrile. Mm -hmm. We had given him paracetamol yes. for the fever. Okay. So you are done an adjunct to the primary survey. Ideally no need of any VBG for this patient at this point of time. Since uh, we have a facility to know creatine we have gone with VBG and you have found out that his creatine was on the higher right. side. Uh, anything about lactate? What was the lactate? Sir, so, lactate was within uh, normal uh, two, 2. So uh, lactate was also normal. So uh, hemodynamically stable, BP normal, temperature was only high. So you started him on paracetamol. Yeah. So this is a very common presentation to the ED. A patient with loin to groin pain associated with UTI, also, with features of UTI. And also he had a glucose value of 440 in the VB. Okay. So glucose was also on the higher side. Okay. Uh, and uh, for uh, can you continue with your sample history sample history patient is a uh, known case of type 2 diabetes <laughs> on metformin glimepad 2mg citagliptin and voglibos so he came with complaints of right side abdominal pain low into groin uh, which was acute in some onset and uh, intermittent colicky type of pain associated to vomiting he, uh, he also uh, along with fever he also has chills and rigor and uh, so there was no any history of dysuria, hematuria, loose tools uh, and uh, no history of any constipation. So uh, on, uh, other than that, uh, no allergic history uh, and no other, no other major history major you could. Only he is having a diabetes history. So he is taking multiple, multiple oral, anti -hypoglyc oral hypoglycemic agents. So from that we can come to know that his sugars might be not under very control. Under. Okay. So, uh, what are the drugs he was on? Glimipride. And Glimipride, uh, uh, Oglibos, uh, Metformin and uh, Citaglipt. Citaglipt, okay. So, uh, then local examination but sir. GAT, uh, abdomen was soft, tenderness over the uh, left flank region, uh, right ilia fossa and uh, right right flank, right ilia fossa, right hypochondry and renal angle tenderness was also present. On the right side? Right side. Okay, renal angle tenderness was there on the right side and you have a right lumbar tenderness. Right lumbar. Uh, right lumbar region, you had a uh, patient had a tenderness. tenderness. Okay. So, uh, what does it point towards? Uh, pyelonephritis. Pyelonephritis is one thing that we need to consider here. Uh, so, what are the normal risk factors for a pyelonephritis? A male patient here. Diabetes. 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 Uncontrolled diabetes. Then, then uh, a urinary calculi which in then okay urinary calculi uh, then prostatitis prostatitis chronic uh, okay. So, uh, he is a male patient, 50-year-old male patient, uncontrolled diabetes, 447 blood sugars. Hmm. Uh, any ultrasound was done for him? So, following it, we did an ultrasound which hmm. was showing right obturatory urinary calculi. Okay. With the uh, bilateral renal cyst and uh, 
ഫെയിലിയർ <laughs> 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 ഫോർട്ടിസ്റ്റിംഗ്സ് not not the so okay. it indicates that this might be there is an underlying ckd also for this patient chronic kidney disease also is there and on top of that there is an acute insult mm-hmm. which has which would have worsened the creatinine right now mm-hmm. so that is only it can be a chronic kidney disease on top of that there is an acute insult that can be the inference suppose the urea is again 150 140 and creatinine is around 4 4.5 it can be related to an acute kidney injury so that is the inference suppose the urea is like 150 creatinine is only 2 what is your inference dehydration it can be pre renal failure part of your pre renal failure one thing as you said dehydration can be one most commonly diarrhea acute gastroenteritis all those things and second inference will be what there is lot of it can be part of your gi bleed because of gi bleed there is lot of hemorrhage and as a result urea has gone up so an disproportionate increase of urea you need to see so in that case it will be more in favor of a pre renal failure or there is a gi bleed okay. or in an acute renal failure usually that ratio usually maintains mm-hmm. if the ratio is not getting maintained that means either it is a chronic kidney disease or there is another pre renal component to that so that is how you can inference from your rft from this rft there can be some amount of chronic kidney disease that you can confirm with your ultrasound mm-hmm. so ultrasound was showing in uh, what is the cortico medullary differentiation was maintained cortico partial 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 changes partial changes are there so he is going for a chronic kidney disease so if it is not an chronic kidney disease the cortical medullary differentiation will be maintained mm-hmm. if there is not maintained that all points towards that this patient is having a baseline he is having a chronic kidney disease on top of that he is having a acute worsening the reason for acute worsening can be the obstruction by the stone secondary it can be your sepsis pyelonephritis so these are multiple these are all any drugs that he is taking already already he is not on any drug that can cause renal failure the most common thing that can precipitate will be a ac inhibitors arb nsaids only history that you need to ask whether he has gone to some hospital for taking pain killers for abdominal pain the common practice is to give nsaids whether he has received any nsaids any other uh, agent or alternative regimens that he has taken alternative medicines that he has taken which may contain heavy metals so all those history you need to ask in for so in this patient you don't have anything he had a, he has not taken in any nsaid he is not on any arbs or ac inhibitors which can worsen the creatinine further so the worsening of the uh, creatinine can be multifactorial it can be related to the obstruction or it can be related to the infection also okay, okay. then uh, further uh, uh, we uh, started with the antibiotics so what was the urine examination finding urine called? examination urine examination showed um, uh, bacteria with uh, numerous parcels okay and uh, uh, he he we, we further we send the urine culture and also okay. so let's wait for the urine culture suppose the patient is in the ed so he is a 50 year old gentleman who has come with history of diabetes with acute abdominal pain since last 3 days and you are suspecting a probable pyelonephritis with an obstructive uropathy also this is our differential diagnosis at this point of time so how will you write a prescription for him so what are what are, what are the major things that you need to have in his blood sugar you need to have a control his sepsis you need to control you need to have a pain management you need to write regarding a fluid management you need to write regarding your electrolyte management also so what are the contents that is needed in your prescription so patient as such uh, as other blood sugars are high mm. we need to uh, correct the 
blood sugar. Blood sugar. Okay. That's the one. But then empirical antibiotic therapy will start. Okay. So uh, what is your empirical antibiotic therapy in this patient that you will select? Fluoroquinolones can be given. Okay. Fluoroquinolones can be given. Okay. Fluoroquinolones are very good drugs that have got very good penetration to the uh, urinary system. So fluoroquinolones is a good choice. Then, then uh, other antibiotics we can uh, uh, start up. Uh, other group is cephalosporins. Uh, cephalosporin. uh, cephalosporin. Now the information that you needed is that whether he is coming from the community or whether he has gone already to some hospital and is coming to you. So if you are suspecting from a community, if the patient is coming from a community, then it is a straightforward thing. So chance of having resistance is low. But if he has gone to another hospital, admitted there for two days and coming to you, the chance of resistance is very high. Like what we had a patient who had a uh, multiple drug resistant uh, Klebsiella and E. coli last week we admitted mm. that lady is having she was already on Europanum from outside mm. she is having a GNP sepsis like that or else what is having you to know so he is coming from a home or he has gone to some hospital taken some medicine Same. that information is important he came, uh, went to a nearby hospital for mm. just given some pain medication pain medication and, okay and uh, came for our hospital, hospital. so he has not received any antibiotics okay. so that is the first information and second information what I wanted is whether it is a recurrent urinary tract infection whether he had this feature of this recurrent urinary tract infection why because if he had a recurrent urinary tract infection he would be exposed to multiple antibiotics so again chance of infection and resistance the resistance is very high so that is the next information that you wanted is he on no 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 it's the first episode so it's the first episode he has not received any other IV antibiotics and what will be the next thing? What is his baseline immunal immunity status? Because he is having an uncontrolled blood sugar here. So they are more prone for this GNB sepsis. So they are more prone for this GNB sepsis. Most common organism will be gram negative only. E. coli, Klebsiella, any of this gram negative organism only they will grow. So he is coming from the community and he never had any recurrent urinary tract infection. Both this information we got. Now you have selected what antibiotic you have selected for him. Mm, you can. tell whatever you are given, you can tell. Uh, <coughs> meropenem is started with meropenem. Meropenem was started for him. I am not denying the fact meropenem is not a bad agent to be started. But meropenem, unless and until we don't have any, because the markers will take time for you to come. Mm -hmm. You will take time for your urine culture, your all those things to come in. Pyelonephritis, the drug of choice to be asked is carbapenem. Mm -hmm. When you have a suspicion of pyelonephritis, the drug of choice, as if now it will be carbapenems, you can start even piperacil, desobactam, ticraslin, clavulanic acid. But whenever the first drug of choice will be carbapenems. When it is a pyelonephritis, I am not telling about urinary tract infection. It is a pyelonephritis. You had a suspicion in mind that of pyelonephritis, you started him on meropenem. Broad spectrum antibiotic, okay, well and good. But always whenever you get a chance, you need to de-escalate. You should not continue on that antibiotic. But... Uh, what could have been the other options for him? You could have started him on fluoroquinolones. There is no harm in starting fluoroquinolones, mm -hmm. cephalosporins, Sorry. even ceftriaxone, yes. ceftriaxone, cybactam. You have a better coverage. Mm -hmm. As I said, uh, ticraslin, clavulanic mm -hmm. acid, levofloxacin, quinolone again. Mm -hmm. These are all very good agents. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have started on meropenem, okay. But only thing is that whenever time permits, you need to de-escalate on that antibiotics. So don't continue on a meropenem. That is the only reserve drug that we have right now. But when you have a strong suspicion of uh, uh, pyelonephritis in the ED if you have any doubt in mind start it and then later on you de-escalate can you uh, so patient, sir, so we'll have to even keep an eye on the emphysematous emphysematous pyelonephritis anaerobic anaerobic meropenem has got coverage okay. so meropenem will cover the anaerobic part also unless and until we are very much suspicious of uh, increase then only we need to add on but meropenem is an agent where we got very good gram negative gram positive as well as anaerobic coverage it doesn't have got MRSA coverage hmm. it don't have MRSA coverage that is the one thing that it doesn't have. So MRSA, if you are suspecting, then you need to add on some other agent. But these days, MRSA agent not very commonly seen from a community. But still, it can happen where an antibiotic misuse is happening. So uh, MRSA, except MRSA, everything will be covered initially. The rhombocytic gravity, since you have not exposed to any other antibiotics, the chance of resistance is very low. Even if you would have started him on a quinolones, it could have been okay only. It is not of any problem, but uh, he is otherwise hemodynamically stable. He was never in sepsis. He had an infection, mm -hmm. but he was not having any organ dysfunction except for his eye creatine. That can be part of his CKD also. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then, 
then uh, antibiotics you said mm. the, then electrolyte the disbalance you can have hyponatremia they are more prone for you remember this hyperkalemia hyperkalemia they will be more prone to develop hyperkalemia and hyponatremia can be there mm. also that part we need to correct mm. Ex- especially his blood sugars are on the higher side also so mm. when you give an insulin infusion they are prone more prone to develop hypokalemia okay. also then mm. blood sugars blood sugar correction can start with uh, iv insulin infusion. infusion short acting or long acting short acting short acting agent so whenever you are in the patient is in a critical area short acting insulin is the regimen of choice so you can use any protocol delta protocol simple thing you calculate uh, if it is 400 sugars you start with 4 units per hour mm-hmm. and you hourly check your grbs and uh, see how the response is if you are having adequate response like more than 50 reduction has happened you can increase the continue the dose or if you are not success that you need to double the dose so that is the delta protocol that you can follow up okay then then uh, and these plasmodics uh, we have to give him painkillers pain also pain whatever be the painkillers the safest will be or will be paracetamol or an opioid uh, agents so then what other investigations that you need to send in for this patient along with uh, the normal we have to give uh, get the inflammatory markers okay uh, what was the crp uh, so crp was 323 323 okay So, serum ketone was negative serum ketones was negative uh, we, since sugars were high you need to rule out that diabetic ketosis this is also then then uh, we send for the u- urine uh, culture was also sent mm. along with it and also other uh, other procal one question can you have a u glycemic decay yes sir which is like oh please uh, give gl- process dapagliflozin this is a newer agent they are very prone to cause you glycemic uh, diabetic ketosis so the classical triad we'll say uh, hyperglycemia might not be seen in this group of patients okay then uh, we send the other routine investigation including the only electrolytes and left ear procalcitonin procal was elevated uh, to uh, sir 8 8 so there is a bacterial infection so now our aim is that we have targeted for a gram negative coverage now we have to obstruction is there mm-hmm. whether to remove that obstruction or we can just continue with iv antibiotics uh, so that is a question for that we had uh, following with the usc we done a ct kub also sir. okay ct kub is showing right kidney bulky kidney with fast finding okay and uh, right upper ureter calculate of size 8 mm with a uh, hy- uh, hy- hydro ureter So what is your inference? This eight mm will stone will pass by its own, or you need to do some intervention to remove this. Intervention uh, more than seven mm intervention is uh, best. ideally less than seven mm. The classical teaching is it will pass by its own, but if it is more than seven mm, ideally needed to be removed by using an cystoscopy or a digestending. And the left kidney is also showing left hydronephrosis. Why there is left hydro nephrosis? Any stone obstruction? But, anything uh, was it? CT was not showing any acid, and no stone was noted. But okay. hydro nephrosis was. Hydro nephrosis without obstruction prostate. Prost. Yeah. Prostate. Uh, prostate. Enlarged. Uh, enlarged. Enlarge. Prostate, prostate was enlarged enlarge enlarge also. Uh, prostate enlarged. See, whenever you have bilateral hydro nephrosis, you have to see where is the obstruction. If there is bilaterally, there is no stone. Only the one kidney is obstruction. Then the common area will be in your prostate or in the bladder. Mm-hmm. So, so there is something that is obstructing the flow of urine. Mm-hmm. So that is what you have to think in terms. Of. Okay. And uh, for 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 the same, we had uh, consulted mm-hmm. with the urology department, and also they had done. Cystoscopy with bilateral digestending was done. Bilateral digestending was done. Okay, so maybe a tiny stone would have been there on the left side that they have done a cystoscopy and they have done a bilateral digestending. So what happened to the patient on next day? Patients uh, in, uh, as, as such the on on the ongoing days, they had his inflammatory markers began to come down and uh, he was improving daily and uh, with also creatinine values uh, on came the, down. Came came down, down to what was the total what level it came down? Uh, You do not have test baseline, mm. but you do come to somewhere around two two point five three. Yes, sir. One point one four. Oh, it came down to one point one four. Okay. So there have been a chronic uh, reason also would have been that, but it is more in favor of an acute. It creatinine came down to one point one four. Okay. So creatinine uh, after digestion, it came to one point one four. So what what you did for your antibiotics? Did you continue the antibiotics? Antibiotic after. Uh, Uh, the culture showed the growth of clepsidra. Clepsidra pneumonia. Uh huh. Span sensitive. Which was span sensitive. See, he is coming from community. Mm-hmm. Even if you started at quinolones or cephalosporins, it would have been good enough. 
So that is the information that always you see where is the patient coming from. If it is a recurrent UTI, there is a high chance that he is having resistance. First time coming from the community, any of our agents, gram-negative coverage agents will cover. So meropenem you started, but always it is not right, right to start meropenem. You can always think start on quinolones or ceftriaxone or these agents. But later if you start on meropenem, definitely you need to de-escalate after 24 to 48 hours. When you get all those things, you need to de-escalate. So antibiotic was de-escalated for it? De-escalated. to what? Antibiotic later on uh, de-escalate to ceftriaxone. Ceftriaxone. Okay, that is good enough, fair enough. You have to de-escalate. Whenever you get an opportunity, you have to de-escalate. Always keep that mind of resistance. So, uh, what is your, t how long is you are planning to discharge this patient? Okay, you are planning to discharge this patient. So, you have to answer the bystander. How long he need to be on IV antibiotics or I antibiotics? Two to three weeks. What is the clear guidelines? It is a complicated UTI. It is a complicated UTI. You need to treat for two weeks. Mm -hmm. Definitely for two weeks. There is no dilemma that in that 10 to 14 days. But here it is highly complicated. Two weeks treatment is needed. Mm -hmm. IV or oral. If the patient is take, able to take orally, okay. you can change to oral antibiotics. Like maybe for the first one week, you can continue on IV antibiotic. Later on the markers, the patient don't have any issue with bioavailability absorption. Definitely you can change into oral antibiotics. So, 14 days is mandatory. Now, here the issue is that this patient has got a stent in place. And he is a diabetes also. So, what you have to keep in mind is there is a high chance that he can come back with a UTI 2 again. So, maybe there is no recommendation. Whenever you go for your textbook, there will not be any major recommendations written for this. But whenever an UTI is treated, it will be advisable. What from our experience, what we have seen that otherwise they will come back with urinary recurrent urinary tract infection to give a prophylaxis, at least for prophylaxis for some days, till their blood sugars are under very good control, their DG stent is removed, and their AKA is improved. So till that time, you can give a prophylaxis with either quinolones, which is a very good drug, or quinolones for maybe 200 to 400 OD till the DG stent is removed or Taximo, that is a cefotaxin. Mm. You can give cefixin. You can ask them to take orally or mitotrophin. Some agent you can give a prophylaxis. Mm. So otherwise they will come back you with recurrent UTA. So that prophylaxis part, whenever you look for this guideline, sometimes you will not see this. But whatever we have done for practice purpose, definitely you need to have them on a prophylaxis, but not on a higher antibiotic, very smaller antibiotic, which will have a basic gram negative coverage. Mm. So that is one additional thing that what we need to do. So uh, 10 to 14 days you have given your IV antibiotics after that when he is going home just give him a prophylaxis antibiotic for at least next to two weeks maybe for maximum for four weeks till the DG stent is removed once it is removed one the path to everything is fine no need to continue the antibiotics otherwise they can come with recurrent uh, urinary tract infections all those complications okay, okay. so uh, anything else to, uh, to add on my patient uh, after uh, creatinine just came down patient was clinically improved and later discharged discharged so in a nutshell what we have discussed we discussed regarding a complicated urinary tract infection with an acute kidney injury yes so what are the why you call it as a complicated urinary tract infection male patient always it is complicated it can be straightforward it is diabetes was the stone was there and there is AK also was there. so it's a complicated UTI so the treatment purpose any depends upon where the patient is coming from from the community or he has already received antibiotics multiple episodes of previous urinary tract infection these are the considerations that you should have before starting an antibiotic so you start in gram negative coverage antibiotic and depending upon the reason why he had is an acute kidney injury more in favor of an obstruction so that obstruction was relieved by your DJ10 and sepsis also was controlled 14 days antibiotic regimen was given and later on if needed you need to send the patient on a basic yes. prophylaxis and blood sugar control very good tight blood sugar control where you need to target an HbA1c of less than 7 mm -hmm. so these are the things that you should be advising him while he is going whether the question he will ask can I stop insulin because he was on OHA. No. He should continue on insulin. Because why? Because on all these three drugs he developed this. So it is not any for him to advisable to continue on OHA. Best will be insulin for him. Once short acting is over, you can put him on long acting insulins. BD doses or OD doses. Whatever he is comfortable with, you can start off with. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.